So please give it up for Amy Van Osdahl. Hi. I'm so excited to be here tonight to tell you about my 15 minutes of fame. But I need to be clear up front, it did not start with a sex tape. No. <laughs> No, my brush with cyber infamy began when this guy became 44th president of the United States. And you know, first there was grief and hand-wringing and excessive wine consumption, followed by steely resolve, the women's march, and putting my elected officials on speed dial, going to every protest about everything. And it never felt like enough. Who was I in the face of this tsunami of executive orders and mustache twirling cabinet appointees, right? I was sitting there one day, looking at my fear-filled Facebook feed, the news, feeling so bad, and I had a thought, and I decided to put it on Facebook, and this is how it started. This morning, I've been pondering a nearly forgotten lesson from high school music. Sometimes in band or choir, you're required to hold a note longer than you can actually hold a note. In those cases, we were taught to mindfully stagger our breath so that the sound appeared uninterrupted. Everybody got to breathe, and the music stayed strong and vibrant. Now, I read an article yesterday that suggested that this administration's litany of a bad executive orders is a way of giving us protest fatigue, so that we will literally lose our will to fight based on this onslaught of ne negative action. Let's remember music. Take a breath. The rest of the band will play. The rest of the chorus will sing. Together, we can create a very beautiful song for a very, very long time. And you don't have to do it all, but you do have to add your voice to the song. With special love to the musicians and music teachers in my life, resist. So that was the post, and these are some of the people that inspired it. And after I shared it, 70 of my friends liked it, which was like a record. And then, <laughs> and then, um, a few of them asked if they could share, and one friend shared with another friend who shared it with her minister who made it the basis for a sermon, and I thought that was really cool. But what you have to understand about me is that, you know, I'm on Facebook, but I don't really do social media. I don't use it for work. I don't Snapchat or tweet or Instagram. So I was really surprised when I saw my Facebook post come back into my Facebook feed attributed to a friend of a friend. And then I was even more surprised a couple weeks later when I saw my Facebook post come back into my Facebook page attributed to Madonna and Michael Moore. Yeah, and at first I was really mad. I was throwing Michael Moore some, some serious shade for plagiarizing my stuff, but that isn't what happened. The attribution just got lost and I gave up. But two purveyors of truth did not give up. A Canadian librarian named Tim and an American X news reporter tracked me down. And the, and the reporter told me that my post had jumped over to Twitter and had been retweeted thousands of times. And he wrote a little article about me that boosted the post even further. And as part of the research for this talk, I actually went out looking for it. And I found it reposted on over 300 websites and translated into French, Spanish, and Italian. Yeah. And still attributed to Michael Moore. <laughs> yeah. So why did the post of a middle-aged white woman who's never made a sex tape, as far as you know, go viral? I think that there are three reasons, and I think that these are universal things that you could take whenever you want to create a spark. And the first one is this idea of community, right? We got the band, we got the choir, we're all in this together. We're all responsible for the music and the outcome, right? In an age of divisiveness, the idea of togetherness and community is really powerful. And there's a corollary to that. If we have a shared sort of source, we also have a, a shared responsibility, right? So the music metaphor is a call to action, and you can take a break, but it isn't a, a permanent hallway pass for a busy life, Bernie didn't win, or I'm just freaked out. I mean, you can't keep doing that. We're relying on you, get back in there. And the last thing is positivity. Um, when I'm at my best, which isn't always, I don't spend my time bashing people who don't think what I think. I, I want to imagine a world and then sing it out loud so that everybody can say, I want what she's having, right? And I recognize that I got a real gift this year, the opportunity to see my own wake. And maybe you haven't had that opportunity yet, but I promise you that it exists, right? And you have the responsibility and the ability to speak your voice out, okay? So take a break, but then add your voice, add your mojo to the song, right? Please put your elected officials on speed dial and call them about one thing every day. They have to be nice to you. It takes five minutes, okay? Really. 
You can volunteer to tutor a new immigrant. You can donate the cash if you have it. There are so many ways to add your voice to the song. And you know, triangle or tuba, alto or soprano, uh, tone deaf or virtuoso, it all counts. Thanks. <laughs> Hey, guys.